What's going on today, guys? Welcome back to the episode of WNN. And tonight we'll be talking about the music production news. In our first story, a new Akai MPC-1 has leaked. Well, actually, it leaked and then it came out, basically. The MPC-1 Plus. And oh boy, did they add a lot of features to it. There are so many new features. It's, uh, I can't keep this going. It's, it's literally just red. And it's got Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, I think. But it's red. Okay, I, I love this here. To celebrate the legendary NPC's 35th anniversary. So we're just constantly celebrating the 35th anniversary by fucking our customers in the ass. We're just gonna give them as minimal change as possible because, you know, people don't like change. So we're just gonna barely change anything and sell them something new. So it still has a seven inch touch screen. Would you believe that it still has 16 pad triggers? Wow, that's insane. I never would have thought. So the main update is the unit's internal memory, which has been increased to 16 gigabytes with over two gigabytes of samples and loops included. So it originally had two gigabytes apparently. So at least that part was upgraded. Uh, it also features WLAN connectivity and you can now sync the oneplus with ableton link and it also has bluetooth too oh boy give it up for akai they're doing they're doing what no other company could oh wait they are they've all been doing this for a very long time i like how even this website is just like they want to they want to suck akai's dick but they're just like you know the stick doesn't even look that good anymore i just uh, I'm kind of over it. NPC devotees could be looking forward to a new NPC live within the next year, which is certainly an exciting prospect. What are they going to do to this one? Add a little more RAM? Maybe they'll make it blue to match the way you feel inside as an Akai customer. So one thing that the NPC One Plus has revealed to me about Akai is they clearly have a humiliation fetish. All right, in our next story, we'll be talking about Ableton Live 11.3 as well as the Push 3. I already talked about the Push 3 in one of my other videos, so that's just going to be covered on briefly here. We're more so going to talk about Ableton Live. So obviously, Ableton a lot alive ableton alive i like that one so obviously ableton live 11.3 is a free update and it looks like they have some pretty great features in here i've experienced a few of them already myself uh, including a new synth named drift they now have auto warping that actually works well as well as full push three integration and more mpe capable instruments let's get into the details of that okay so drift is an all new mpe capable synth and the first for all editions of live including Live Light. Drift is a characterful device capable of a wide variety of sounds from every era of modern music. Its minimal layout and interactive controls make adjusting the sound easy for musicians new to synthesis, while the sounds it can produce will give even experienced sound designers a broader sonic palette. Inspired by classic hardware, but borrowing heavily from modern synths and Eurorack modules, Drift has been carefully tuned by ear to deliver great sound at any setting, quickly and easily. They also improve the auto warping as well too. I don't know if you guys used live before this, I'm assuming at least a few of you have, but when it auto warped before, it was completely terrible. I would say virtually always it would get it wrong. But basically now when you import an audio file, it, I would say probably about 99% of the time gets it accurate. So you'll be spending a lot less time manually warping things. Thank you, God. They've also added MPE capability to quite a few of their other instruments as well too. I'm assuming because of the push three. Oh, by the way, guys, push three review coming soon. I'm working on it as we speak. Well, not literally as we speak. An updated core library with expressive content. Note Echo now, now supports MPE. MP control device now has added functionality to update UI and reduce CPU load. And one of the most important updates here is the full push functionality. You can now sync your push three to uh, Ableton Live, you can actually see it in there where your places are and you can drag things in or out from it if you have the push three, obviously. Makes it really easy to transfer project files as well as samples in or out. In our next story, Will I Am expresses his concern over AI. I'm so sick of AI, I'm so sick of it. Humans need to just take over. Okay, he is quoted as saying, I own the rights to the songs I wrote, but I don't own the rights to my face or voice. And it's actually a pretty decent point. I'm not, I'm not mad at that point. It, yeah, you should have the rights to your own face and voice. At the same time, I guess when it comes to things such as like, you know, commentary and criticism, there has to be lines drawn too, obviously, but the same lines I feel like are drawn for media too. That's the urgent thing, protecting our facial math. I am my face math. I am my face math. Let's see what he has to say here. So should artists though be concerned with that whole formula with AI and what you're or talking about? Or is it about? benefiting the music industry? <laughs> They talk like robots. It's funny. The question about AI coming from people that sound like robots. What do you think about that one, Will? I am. Is it benefiting the music industry? Most important word in that sentence you said is the word industry. 
there's gonna be a fourth industry that's coming. And this fourth industry is not just for musicians and artists. This fourth industry is for my moms, your cousins, your nieces, your tias, your tios, your abuelitas, your abuelitos, like your- uh, For a while, I thought that that list was just gonna keep going. Your 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 brothers, your sisters. Oh, no, it is, okay. Sisters, <laughs> your nieces and your nephews. Why? Because they all, we all have voices and everyone's compromised because there are no rights or ownership to your facial math or your voice frequency. Okay. So that. forget songs, banks, people calling up your bank pretending to be you. For One of the issues with the, the whole facial math and voice frequency is there are people that sound and look the same. Is it always completely identical? No. Sometimes it is, though. It's very rare, but there are people that look very similar to each other. I would say almost the exact same. Forget songs. Just family matters and wiring money. You get in a FaceTime or a Zoom call, and because there's no spatial um, intelligence on a call, there's nothing to authenticate if this is an AI call or a person call. So people should be more worried about that than really like... The, the rights to I got a feeling. I own the rights <laughs> to the songs I wrote, but I don't own the rights to my face or my yeah. voice. Get out of here, bro. Right. There's new laws and new industries about to poof. This time next year, you'd be like, oh, well, I am said that on a radio station. Dude, people have been, you're not the first person to say this, man. One thing I'm noticing, I'm slowly growing. Not in that way. Uh, I'm slowly growing with, with my reactions here. Next time you guys see me react to something, I'm just going to be like, I'm going to be this part, this big of the screen. And then after that, it's going to be like, I'm just going to be covering up the whole fucking thing. Welcome to the Apple store. Can I help you? In our next story here, we'll be talking about the Arteria Keylab Essential MK3. So it's essentially a universal MIDI controller that looks kind of funny. It looks kind of ha ha, ha ha ha. What I think is funny about it is how it looks like it has a little iPod or MP3 player in the middle of it. it costs $219 for the 49 key and $269 for the 61 key. It includes Analog Lab 5, which is pretty sweet. It includes Ableton Live Lite. What doesn't include Ableton Live Lite? I even heard that new Push 3 includes Ableton Live Lite. It includes Model D, Grand Piano, The Gentleman, Melodics, Improve Your Keyboard Skills, Loop Cloud, look at the stats of it though so we want to see we want to check the stats give me the stats readily map controls for any daw or what says with your daw of choice i'm assuming hopefully any daw maybe not all of them it's got great control with analog lab that's nice well what about the keys though what kind of keys are we talking about are they semi-weighted what are they not seeing any information on the keys so it has a good chord play mode allowing you to play powerful chords with a single key it's got a scale mode allowing you to lock into scales. It's got an arpeggiator. The pads are RGB though. Thank you. Thank you for that. It says it has durable velocity sensitive hybrid field keys. I didn't see anywhere on the website where it says whether they're weighted, semi-weighted, not at, they must not be semi-weighted then. It says hybrid synth field key bed. In our next story, Air Music has released a new emulation of the Juno 60 synth. And according to Music Radar, the Jura's out. I don't know what it is. I don't know what it is with these companies, but they they always just ha they feel the need to do a pun. They, they can't do any sort of humor except for a pun. Uh, frankly, it's sickening. It's sickening. I, I'm actually disgusted right now. Of course, they have the NPC One Plus here because why wouldn't they? Why would they not? As a single DCO, a monster sub oscillator, unparalleled VCF, and if you want that, lashings of that chorus. I think I'm all right. Okay, so they have two workflows: original front panel design plus an extended modern UI that gives you even more ways to tweak the sound. The envelopes expand your LFO shapes, chorus, obviously. It's $74.99, or you could try it for free. The price might be, it'll adjust at some point though. It says launch day price, that's why. How long is launch day? Who fucking knows? I don't, I don't know. Is it literally just gonna be the first day? I doubt it. Anyways, let's hear what it sounds like really quickly. Oh, it sounds like Stranger Things, <laughs> Sounds okay, doesn't sound terrible. It's not blowing my mind either though. No, we're sold out of Apple Watches. Um, can I interest you in a... Uh... All right, our next story, we'll be talking about the RX 12 billion. Apparently it's an emulation of the SP 1200 sampler. As you expect, the RX 1200 is all about that sound. 
and it's all about sound lately. The 12 bit resolution, uh, the 26.041 kilohertz sample rate and the SSM 2044 low pass filter have all been carefully emulated. So it looks the same, but it has some changes to the interface and workflow. Unrestricted sample length, okay, good. 900 samples of 50 presets, available now for PC, Mac, Linux, and Reason. Ooh, cost $29, that's, hey, that's not bad. It's pretty good, but is there a free trial? Not seeing a free trial, but Okay, in our last story of the night here, we're going to talk about something I you may have seen if you watch my second channel. Make sure to go subscribe there if you haven't. I'll leave it down in the description. But we talked about Nopia. Uh, so this Nopia may have you saying yes. <laughs> so it's a mini core generator. It had a prototype video posted to YouTube. It's like if Sandbox was a, a MIDI controller, but it wasn't a monthly subscription and it doesn't it doesn't suck. And it's like more like user friendly. Uh, there are a few things about it that do have me scratching my head though, like the, the base pads, how why there's only two of them. That, that part doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me. Because I feel like there's definitely more than two notes that work in bass. So, like if you're just doing the, the root and the fifth, that's just like the most obvious, right? So it's a semi-modular MIDI chord generator that functions based on the principles of tonal harmony. So you have a root and can trigger chords that move away from this in degrees of the scale. Three, four, five, etc. It's a bit like a creative MIDI generating plugin, but in hardware, basically. Tonal selector indicates the current, and the chord builder combines notes together in that key. You can choose between simple and complex versions of a chord and adding available extensions for each degree. Okay, guys, that's it for another episode of WNN. If you made it to the end of the video, comment. Mm. Mm. For everybody who likes this video, I will build you your very own prototype. Prototype. A prototype of a prototype. Patreon for a support channel or become a channel member or consider joining me on Twitch. I'll see you guys next time.